so losing control um, of the steering wheel, it was scary. I thought ghost, I'm in Bill Hara, um, <laughs> you know, some kind of poltergeist or something was happening and I'm like, what is happening in my car? I mean, no, where am I going? And it's like, help me. And I'm, it's, it's moving. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I have my foot on the gas pedal, but the steering wheel is going in a different direction. I didn't, I didn't crash my car. Cliff or something? Was it? No, I wasn't that far up yet. Oh, okay. I didn't crash my car. And so I'm just holding on the steering wheel. And I end up behind the building and I stop my car and I said, what am I doing here? And I get out. And I'm walking around, I'm hearing this music, and it's rock music, and I'm saying, I didn't know they had a club here, and it's like, what are they singing about? This is Jesus and rock music? Mm -hmm. I never heard of this before. What is going on? And I listened a few minutes, and music stopped, and then this lady came out. She looked just like Cher, and she started talking to me and saying, why don't you come inside? And I was like... Uh, uh I can't go in there. There's Christians in there. I'm not dressed for that. I'm I'm wearing <laughs> hot pants and a halter top, and and I don't have any shoes on, and my hair was stringy from the, it was like misty rain out, and and she says it doesn't matter how you look. God doesn't judge the outside appearance. He looks at your heart. You need Jesus. And I'm like I don't know. I I got more important things to do. And she goes, Well, what are you gonna do? And I said, Well, I'm just gonna go and drive my car off the the mountain, and I'll go home and be with God. Um, I said, she said, no way. She says, you'll go to hell. She said, that's, you know, if you take your life willingly, you will go to hell. And I was like, bummer, I've got enough problems now. I've got hell here. <laughs> I mean, what's, you know, what, what can I do? And she goes, well, come inside. I go, I don't want to go in there. I said, you know, being around that, I was thinking the Jim Jones cult because, you know, you know, these weird Christian people coming out and talking to you because, she said she loved me. She put her arm around me and said, I love you. And I said, how could you love me? You don't even know me. And she said, because Jesus is inside me and he loves you so much. He wants you to know him. And I was like, I don't know. And then that tug of war was going on. It's so strong. It's like I'm hearing something saying, get out of here. This is like the Jim Jones call. Get out now. And the other voice is like, come inside. You'll find peace. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll go inside a few minutes if you'll let me leave if I want to. I thought I'd get her off right? my back. So I went in there, and man, they rocked. It was not as hard as Cornerstone yet, because this is 1980. Sure. But um, they rocked, and that woman turned out to be the lead singer, Tempe Brown. She was the lead singer in this band, and I'm telling you. What was it, the band? It was called Redemption Band. And I, I got up, and I was just dancing, because I thought that's what you did. You know, and not, nobody else was dancing. I was like, how could they be wasting this good music and not dance, you know? So, um, Why should the devil have all, all the, devil? the good music? That's it. <laughs> so then um, she slowed down. There was a song called Jesus Come Home. And it pictured Jesus coming up the stairs of my heart. I mean, it was like he was walking up the stair of my heart and knocking on the door. And I closed my eyes and I felt him so close, like his love was just so real. And I said, I need this. I jumped up and I started running out the door. And people said, where are you going? Where are you going? I said, I just want to come outside and I just want to know Jesus. I want to have him in my life, in my heart. And they said, well, we'll pray with you. Well, they got around me and uh, held my hands. And when I was praying, they led me in the sinner's prayer as, you know, asking Jesus in my heart and giving him control of my life. I had my eyes closed and I felt like I was literally leaving this earth. And I thought, well, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody because I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And I looked down, I was like, whoa, what happened? I'm on the ground. They go, that was all the burden, the sin, the hurt, the torment, all the things I had been through was lifted off. I was finally free, free, free for the first time in my life. Such a wonderful freedom. July 25th, 1980. The Lord gave me a scripture to stand on. The, the seventh month is uh, July 25th verse, and it's in Matthew. The wind blew and the rain fell and beat upon the house, and it didn't fall because it was founded on the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ, and that was through a Christian rock concert. It all comes together. Can you guys come out to hear some rock and roll tonight? Well, we can't hear rock and roll, so let's get this started, shall we?
generation would say that if you scream, that's, you know, of the devil or you can't praise God that way. But, um, I mean, we totally believe and know that God writes our songs for us. And um, they're from God and they're for God. And because maybe we don't sound like Michael W. Smith or something like that, I think a lot of, you know, maybe parents or older people don't feel that's acceptable, but we are able to reach kids that are never going to go, you know, to a big contemporary Christian show. And I'm not knocking contemporary Christian at all, but this is, this is our calling, you know. Music to um, a Christian is a vessel. It's a vessel to draw people to the truth. That's what it is. It's a tool. God gives us these talents to share, to reach out and touch other people with the talents and gifts he's given us. But it's not to keep for ourselves or say, look at me, I'm great, I'm famous. <laughs> you know, it's all about, hey, who can I touch? Part of me wants a big warning label on the record, you know, like, hey, you might like this. It might sound like a bunch of bands that you like. You might not be able to discern any kind of godness out of this record whatsoever. But don't forget, it was Christian rock. And it's he's singing about Jesus, whether you think it's girls or not, you know. We're out there to play music and entertain and provide a positive message. And yet a minister, but not necessarily preach. shows getting booked by like this booking agent who put us in like a lot of churches and stuff and like church halls and just wherever they could get us basically so we were nothing we were like playing to like 10 people or whatever and as things got better we started wanting to play clubs more because as things go with those like church halls and stuff it's kind of shoddy sometimes and like things kind of like like yeah the PA uh, the dude broke down he's not gonna be here tonight do you mind not playing with a PA is that a PA is that cool and so we started playing club work, it just went a lot smoother and there was always things that worked, you know, and kids would be like, why, why? We're like, well, why are you playing clubs? Yeah, rock yeah, like these rock clubs are just set up for rock shows, you know, we're not playing like with like the altar, you know, you can't move that, yeah, the pastor doesn't want you to touch that. Yeah, we, we started out playing Christian shows mainly because no one else would let us play because we were like a Christian band or whatever. Um, get, yeah, was a label. yeah, we were on a record label that was notorious for being like a Christian label, and so no one would give us a show. So we started there, but over in the last little while, um, a couple years ago, we stopped playing Christian shows for a number of reasons. Um, it it bothers me to be around like a lot of Christians all the time, um, and also a lot of times there was a lot of different expectations about what our band was going to come in and do, and we wanted to come in and play music, and they would always have like various different agendas for what they wanted us to be and do as far as like spreading a message um, or sloganizing um, some aspect of our faith so that it would be obvious to kids and it would encourage them in their faith or whatever and so but yeah so now like I don't so, sorry that, that was way too long. No, that's okay. beginning of when we've gotten together it's been more about like we want to play anywhere and anywhere that we play we want to kind of get one-on-one -on -one relationships with people there you know whether it be the club owner or the or the, the you know yeah whatever it is and it's like I think 
mostly it's through relationships that that people will see that you have love for them and that you know there's something different about you and it's because you know it's because that God loves us and you know we we believe in a God that is loving and that's that's what we want to show people Before I was a Christian, something that was a stepping stone for me is I got this Willie Nelson disc. And like, I didn't even know that Willie Nelson was a Christian, and, and he may not really be one. <laughs> but he was singing these songs in all seriousness, and I, I was a really big Willie Nelson fan, and still am. And I, I, I found myself having to take Jesus more seriously because I took Willie Nelson very seriously, and he took Jesus seriously, apparently, by singing these songs. So I became more open to it. Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it so. Help me, Jesus, I know what I am. And now that I know that I Um, as I grew up, um, the only music I was allowed to listen to was Christian music. And I remember in 1969 finding somebody named Larry Norman, and the album was Upon This Rock. My feet are on the rock, my name is on the road. This is probably sinful because it's rock and roll, even though it sounds like Christian and he's singing songs like I Wish We'd All Been Ready um, about uh, the rapture. And then um, my sister went away to college in the mid-70s and came home with something, uh, Michael O'Mardian. And again, it was just too rock and roll, it couldn't be Christian. And then I finally discovered that it is possible to have Christian music that is rock and roll. Led Zeppelin, they were my gods. They literally were my gods. And that song, Stairway to Heaven, was my like number one song. I listened to it almost every day after it came out. And that song, after years later, I found out that when you play it backwards, that, that part about there are two roads you can go by, but in the long run there's time to change your mind. If you play it backwards in that area, it says, Satan, he is my sweet Lord, Satan. It says it very plainly when you like that. Oh, yes, my sweet Satan. Oh, Lord, let me know that I forget. Let me say, I forget. Another one.
one plays the du- one that song, another one bites the dust. You play it back, backwards. It's fun to smoke marijuana, or it begin to smoke marijuana. It's fun. To, that's what it says, and it's very plain. I don't think they intentionally did it, but there is spirit. Like I said, spirit is in control of the music. That spirit can have anything in or into that music that it chooses. Demons are real. They, you know, they had these preachers coming through to talk about backwards masking and mm-hmm. all these examples of proof that it, you know, all this stuff. So, um, and I remember it was sixth grade and I was listening to Def Leppard Pyromania. That was my favorite album at the time. And uh, my parents, my, my dad was kind of make pretending that he was gung ho about it. Or he, he, was, he was nervous about it, right. some things, you know. And uh, so I, I remember I had to play the album in front of my parents and see, you hear what they're talking about? And, I had no idea what they were singing about. It just right. sounded cool. Right. And so, so he said, well, you know, I want to take you to some Christian concerts and we'll, we'll check this stuff out. And one of them was Re- Resurrection Band, All right. which is actually really cool. And then Larry Norman, mm. which was amazing. And the rest of it was just garbage. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like for a period of, I don't know, once a month for 10 months or something like that. And at the end, he, he said, do you like these things at all? He said, he said, right now, we're not really not into it very much. <laughs> he says, you know what, it's horrible. This music's horrible. You don't have to listen to this. <laughs> Everybody has their own story. Like when I was in college I threw away probably 30 albums because they just dragged me down. They brought back memories and you know stuff. And I since have bought most of them back because I don't have the same problem. But there was a, a point in my life when it was dragging me down. So everybody's different. But you can't you can't take the same standard and put it on everybody because now I listen to Zap 4 and it doesn't bother me, but it, it did at one point. So. Do you think that's because you're 10 years older? Or, you know? I just think I'm further along. Like, I don't struggle with the same things I was then, you know? And just everybody's at a different point in their life and different things are true for them. It turns out from talking to people that that's a fairly common occurrence is that you go through your your library of CDs and you throw out all the all the Zeppelin and the, the Mega CDC and the Sabbath and that's the Sabbath. obvious right and uh, so I did that you know are they, are they back in, in the stack yet or no I ha- you know but I have you know if I hear Zeppelin on the radio. I don't change it, you know. I had some, I had some punk records. <laughs> worth so much. Money. It'd be worth so much money right now. Uh, I had this Henry Rollins seven inch. So uh, it was like limited edition. I could probably get five hundred bucks for it, but I got it. I remember the day. I was just like, this is an idol. This is an idol in my life. And I, uh, I took all these records. It was so hard. I had to not think about it. I had to turn my mind off, and I walked out to the dumpster. Yeah, that was that. And then I was listen- I listened to Christian thrash metal for a year, and then I was just like, "This is insane! It's, it's terrible!" It and I was so bad. I tried to start buying these records back again, but I couldn't find some. <laughs> so yes, we did give you the Christian music throwaway. And as far as listening to secular music, like my parents didn't really have much of a problem with it, but you know they'd want to. My there mother, were some tapes I didn't tell them I, I had. My mother made me throw away my E-Man toys. My mom didn't like Masters of the Universe. Yeah, my mom Who's had a, the Master of the Universe? That's exactly what, My mom had the same problem. She wouldn't let me watch the TV show. Yeah. 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 I've seen that a lot with my friends who can do a lot of second bands and then you'll hang out with them a couple months later and they're cursing and talking about sex and everything else. And I don't want that to happen to me, so I try to avoid as much as I can. Actually, I started off with mostly just Christian, uh-huh. and now I've started to listen to a little bit more secular. Like, I don't really want to. I want to kind of get away from it, but I still listen to some of it. Yeah. Why do you want to get away from it? I know it's not good. You know, it's people say that you just listen to the music, but no matter what, you still hear the lyrics. We don't need no color cop.
big influence was uh, The Clash and uh, Wendy Calling in particular. And um, I uh, just loved, uh, I loved the, um, well, first of all, I liked the fact that they got together as a band and really none of them could play instruments. And I actually have a degree in music, but I can't play anything. So that was very appealing. Um, of course, I managed to get musicians around me. That helped. Um, and uh, I loved the urgency in their music. And, um, and I loved the fact that they were singing about the stuff that they believed in, really passionately about. And, um, and, and just the wordplay. And uh, just, that was like the band. But I, you know, I mean, music I liked, but that was that album like sort of changed me. And so I thought, as a Christian, I would love to do music with that same kind of passion and urgency. Uh, but as a Christian, of course, I I feel like I can also offer hope. What we've realized is that the line between secular and Christian music is a lot blurrier than it used to be. And I went back and listened to some Doobie Brothers songs about the, the children in the street that don't have any shoes, and, and there are biblical messages contained in secular uh, music. And so we've realized that we are now judging music um, based on Christian standards, but the music we have in our house is not all quote-unquote Christian or performed by Christian, which allowed me to go back and buy a Led Zeppelin album that I always wanted but was never allowed to have uh, with Stairway to Heaven on it. Mm -hmm. And then the song Black Dog, the lyrics, hey, hey, mama, say the way you move, gonna make you sweat, gonna make you groove. I decided that was about aerobics. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the uh, in the hardcore punk tent. I found that to be absolutely amazing. It was like a, it felt like it was a Hitler youth rally. <laughs> Almost, it was these, it was these like, scary tattooed bruisers pumping their fists in the air, chanting slogans. But you know, in the middle of this, you have this singer talking about what they learned in their quiet time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't. I think it lost the whole really being satanic thing. It's more like if you hear rock some, out. If, if you, you hear know? something tough and you hear something you like, that's it means rock out. Yeah. If you hear something that has a pulse and yeah. threatens you or just speaks to you in that hard music <laughs> way, you can either bang your fist, because you can it was, wave your hair around, or you can bring up the horns. Because it was so ridiculous even back then, if people were doing it, you know, it wasn't. I mean, if people were really seriously saying Satan, you know, I mean. I don't know, it's a silly. Anyway. I don't think even Satanists would do that. <laughs> you know? We make sure to, to talk about why we're here and what we're about and offer a chance for anyone to come and talk to us about what it is that we promote. And our biggest stance is, is hope amidst despair. This 
in the, in the dark metal scene, it's all hatred and darkness and despair. And we just want to show that there is hope, there is a light, and that light is Christ. If anybody has any questions about why we're here, what we have to say, what we're doing, feel free to ask us. We are here to represent hope. Hope in a dark, terrible, disgusting, awful world. Hope that is definitely, definitely there if you're willing to see it and you're willing to embrace it. That last track was a new one off of our new album. The next one's called As the Fall Breaks. And it's about regrets and not having said what you wish you would have while you still had the chance. Because there is no guarantee that tomorrow will come. Work out your problems with your brothers now while you can. try to be as uh, technical and progressive as we can. To uh, we, we feel in the Christian scene you have to be um, better than the secular bands for them to even give you the time, especially in a, in a death metal scene where most of it's about Satanism and, and hatred and evil. Uh, if we're not doing something that's uh, at least at the par with their best bands, then you're not going to get um, them to even give you a chance. We've been around for 13 years now and we've never been totally accepted by mainstream metal, metal community because of our beliefs. Because it's, I mean, Christianity and rock music is controversial enough, but in metal music, metal, metal is supposedly, you know, the whole point of being metal is to be evil and stuff like that. Which, uh, you know, I can see definitely, I mean, uh, you know, as far as, as far as that goes, but uh, there's a lot of cool things that are dark that aren't necessarily evil. It's just because they know what we're about regarding our name and stuff like that, and uh, and you know we're pretty clear. I talk about our songs and what they mean and stuff like that. But it's like I said, it's not it's not supposed to be super deep because uh, we just uh, when people come to a show, they just want to see a show, you know, and that's what we want to give them. But we want to give them something that's just as good as anything out there because there's a hundred other bands, metal bands or whatever that are great. They're awesome, and if we're not as good or or whatever, I mean, nobody's really going to care what we think about anything. <laughs> so, our 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 whole thing has been is has been to be really uh, just to put out great music. This is my daughter Zoe. <laughs> hi. hi, Zoe. You're on How the TV. You? Say hi. Hi. Can you sing like Daddy? Yeah, you can. 
Jesus! <laughs> that was great. Well, I'm not in any Christian band, so. What's that? You're not into any Christian band? Not really. Really? There's not one Christian band? Come on now. I don't have my own any Christian band. Really? Yeah. What? I don't have my own couple. Well, that's odd. Why is that? Because you haven't. I mean, really? Yes. Love is second rate. Right. I mean, I think that's a complete joke. I, I definitely feel that, you know. I don't know, how do you say it? I guess in a, in a, from a faith aspect, I think right. that, you know, Christians or whatever should be making incredible music, you know? We shouldn't be going, oh, let's be the Christian this, or the Christian that. It's just like, why sell yourself short, you know? Like, Christian you, Green Day. Or... Yeah, it's just yeah. so, and, and the, even like the worst is like the market, you know, recommended if you like, you know, Tool. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Tool? Yeah. Right. But it's just like, it's all dumb, you know, I don't know. The stuff that bugs you when you listen to it is the stuff that seems like kind of a a perky version of those little newsprint cartoons, you know, the chick publications uh, cartoons where there's like all these Christian messages but in a comic book form, you know, and it's almost as though, well, if we make it dumb enough, if we put it in comic books, then people will get it, you know. And there's... Christian rock that's, that's like that, where it, it's like, if we just say these same things that people have been saying for a few thousand years, but if we say it with a spiky hairdo and some bouncy music, then, then we'll get the kids to listen. That aspect of it, that it is being used as a tool by the church as a larger force, that bugs people. Is there anything about the Christian music industry or uh, bands in general that uh, that you don't like? Uh oh. Yeah, there's a lot I don't like. Yeah, there's a lot I don't like. I think a lot of the uh, the bad stigma that Christian musicians in this industry has brought they've brought it on themselves. You know, it's um, especially in the early days there was every Christian band was a, a counterpart to a band that was out there in, in the general market and. Um, and um, you know, Christian bands are notorious for doing really stupid things and cheesy things because they can get locked into an industry that will immediately uh, buy into what they're doing because they can be such an obvious counterpart. You know, um, you know, I want to be the Christian AFI or I want to be the Christian, you know, uh, you know, blah blah blah, whoever. You know, and uh, so that appeals to kids because they immediately can go to their parents and say, "Well, I like this band, but look, this band sounds." Just like them, and you know, and and I don't. I think that's wrong, and I, I just, I think Christians should lead the way when it comes to art, or, or not even lead the way, but just should just be doing it as true as anybody else, regardless of their their background or their uh, their faith. You know. I had a friend a few years ago who had grown up in kind of an evangelical Christian family and had only been allowed to listen to Christian rock, and he talked about like going to the I don't think they have record stores, but wherever you go to buy Christian records and there being this big thing on the wall, like, if you like Bruce Springsteen, try this person, you know? Um, if you like Poison, listen to these people instead. And, you know, this whole sort of thing of, of all these mainstream acts and then all these Christian equivalents. As amazing as I'm sure some of these Christian rock bands are, there's a lot more amazing real bands. Kids are going to listen to the music that they like. <clears throat> and if you don't give them a Christian alternative to it, they're still going to listen to that kind of music. Preach the word, the gospel, never hostile. Unless you talk about my brother Jesus Christ, we get hype in the night. We light it, ignite it, we never going to fight it, never
never smoke it, never choke it, take it, we break it, we shake it, we party, party people, God, Genesis, to revelation, I get inspiration from my people, and God, the Holy Spiritual power, come down, rain down, rain on me, God is an awesome God, can't you see, my God is an awesome God, he reigns from heaven, I part with will. Basically, there's this weird, you know, growing up Christian and growing up um, in Christian culture and then starting to like music in high school, it didn't have anything to do with it at all. And then, you know, writing songs and, and being kind of pegged as, you know, a Christian this or a Christian that. And then after that, having some general market success where there would be writers who would write in magazines about Pedro the Lion that weren't Christian magazines, that were just a regular it, I felt like I had sort of like escaped you know, in this way that I really longed to, and I, and I just wanted to be, like, I, I didn't want to be marginalized because, you know, you, you feel feelings and you want them to feel validated and you express them in whatever art form you're doing it in, and you, you don't want that thing that you, you know, that you care so much about to be marginalized by just being like, oh, well, this is just whatever, this is just Christian, or this is just this or that. stuff that I was writing with the Smoking Popes was sort of like, uh, it was about you know, failed relationships or uh, I would uh, employ a lot of like melancholy imagery in it and things like that. And I find that it's, it's a lot more of a challenge because the, uh, the message of the gospel is really a positive thing, you know, it's good news. So like, the question is, how do you sing consistently about uh, good news without it coming across being like, cheesy and just sort of trite? Um, I mean, a lot of people are able to pull that off. But the question is, how, in my in my st style of writing, how am I, I going to work that in? Because that wasn't I wasn't used to writing primarily happy things before, so. You know. because, uh, it, you know, somebody with that powerful word, somebody so poetic as Josh, um, when, when he uses the, when he, when he has the, the Bible as a reference, he, he puts such poetry into it that it it's almost seems at times that, you know, they should rewrite Psalms and some of Josh Caterer verses should be in there or something because he's, he's really powerful. lifting something up, you know, and uh, usually it's themselves. You know, usually people are singing, lifting themselves up. Not always, but it's, it's quite common. Uh, and 
and but nobody has a problem with that, which I find very interesting. Like, mm. like I'm a, I can make myself into an idol in front of all you people, and you know, and, and ask basically say, you know, I want you to worship me, and that's perfectly acceptable. Mm. But if I say I take no credit for this, you know, in full humility, and I actually you know give credit to an invisible being that you know you can't uh, see or taste or touch, um, all of a sudden it's, you know, it's, it's this incredibly offensive thing. You know, we'll, we'll play shows and uh, people kind of like laugh at us or, you know, walk out when we talk about Jesus or whatever. And I guess that's kind of hard, but I think our struggles are more internal, like within the band. Like it's, it's a weird thing to be in a band and have people enjoy your music and you want to do well as a band and you want to strive to do better but at the same time give that glory to God and I think I think any Christian band struggles with pride um, just because it's it's so hard because I mean God writes our songs God gave us the van that we're in God allowed us to play at Cornerstone. God did everything for us, but sometimes we forget about that and we think that maybe we deserve something or that we've earned something. And um, it's hard, I think, to always totally give all the glory to God. So there's this question, like if, if you're doing this as a Christian, you want it to be like a ministry, like you want, to, you, you want it to glorify God. So you want him to sort of always be the focus, but it's hard because people are always making you the focus because they want to put you up on the pedestal. So you're always asking yourself this question, why am I doing this? Am I really doing this to glorify God or am I doing this because I want to be famous and stuff, you know? And Lord, I pray for the musicians as they play that they might magnify you, that they would put some of their ego and pride behind them that they would play to your glory and to your honor and the young folk would hear a message that challenged them to repent. All right. Come on, Come on. Uh. seems like uh, the same thing that's happened to rock and roll and punk and underground music culture uh, in the Christian society, meaning that it's all become kind of hot topic, you know, the hot topic store in the malls, the punk store in the malls, mm -hmm. you have those out here. Uh, it's kind of like hot topic uh, polarization of the Christian youth movement, where it's slogans and slangs and t-shirts and bumper stickers and uh, I guess I may be really wrong, but it seems like the meaning may be secondary compared to the numbers, the sheer numbers. It, it, it presents spirituality as something that you just, you can kind of consume. You can plug into it and you can consume it. It's Christianity in a consumer package. There was a, there was a, there was a bumper sticker, and you know, Rush Limbaugh does this all the time. It just hit me on the day I was there, comparing abortion to the Holocaust. I was just like, oh my god. Uh, show us like um, your necklace again. 
Yeah. And explain what it means again. For this me. one, it's it it's the fetus in the womb playing guitar. It's from Rock for Life, which is like an anti-abortion place. They like go around and protest places and stuff. It's really neat. People have a problem with Christian bands because they have a problem with Christians, or because they have a problem with some aspect of Christianity, or they have a problem with some with the Christian political agenda, which in the United States you, you really can't ignore. I'm tired of being on the wrong side. I'm tired of the church always being on the hateful side, and the closed-minded side, and the bigoted side, and the judgmental side. I'd rather someone accuse me of loving too much than loving too little. I, I'm just so sick and tired of us judging people so horribly. I'm sick and tired of what we've done to the homosexual community and how we've ostracized them and made them feel like God will never love them or accept them. But we always want to vote for the people who are going to crush the homosexual community down. I don't care. I'm not getting into politics. I'm just saying that's what the world sees us as. They see us as enemies. They see us as closed-minded hypocrites. They see us as people who hate them. I mean, there's struggles going on, but they're not the right kinds of struggles, I don't think, right? You know, not if you're pursuing spirituality, not even if you're pursuing Jesus Christ. I, I think Jesus would vomit if he was, if he was watching. You know, Jesus, I, I think Jesus, if he were alive today, would be spending time in gay bars, getting to know gay people. And that is a huge taboo in evangelical Christian culture, being gay. Yeah. We have a son who declared he's homosexual. Okay. That's why he, one of our children isn't here. The other one's married and lives in Texas. Okay. But and she met her husband. Yeah, husband. she met her husband there. So, here. Uh, here, I'm yeah, here, I'm sorry. <laughs> so what, what's your view on it? I mean, do you... Homosexuality is a perverted deviant behavior. Okay. Period. New but... chapter, new paragraph, new book, unrelated subject. If somebody says they're going to go out and beat up homosexuals, I'll do what I can to stop me at personal risk. I am a firm believer in, and hate the sin, love the sinner. Um, it's just, and people have a lot of trouble understanding that. I still am trying, kind of wandering around going, uh, uh, with this whole situation. It's, so would your son come here? Would your son feel safe coming here? Uh, he wouldn't come here. Right because now, of, of, yeah, um, so he just no, totally. He doesn't, like he doesn't like camping. Oh, okay. He doesn't like. He was here last year. He was here last year. Okay. Um, Does he feel accepted by the people out here? I don't know. Okay. Um, he just doesn't like camping. He doesn't like camping. It's the biggest thing. He says that he doesn't feel accepted by a lot of people. Yeah. Well, that's. And I mean, I accept him for. Uh, what he, I do not accept what he does. I accept him. I love him. There's uh -huh. nothing that he can do or say to make me not love him. The problem with Christian rock is that you're a Christian rock band, fine, whatever. If you disagree with any of Christianity, you know, this huge, giant thing that has really obvious beliefs Homosexuality is bad, abortion is bad, you know. If there is someone that's a Christian rock band that is any good, I have to assume they agree with all of that. Everything we do, everything we believe in, we place it up on some kind of pedestal. <laughs> Try to take some kind of program, revolution, and name it the revolution. Things turn for it, it turns to dust. Yeah. Our punk rock, Whatever it is, it can turn to garbage as soon as it begins to exclude and cut out people based on any kind of pride, prejudice, or junk. Throw it out. If you're building a scene, it better be sucking people in. It better be looking for the excluded. Every society pushes people out. We've got to build a society that pulls people in. Or what's it worth? It's all talk.
Now you said some of these shows sometimes would give pizza or something to the kids. Oh yeah, they had this is every night mainly. Uh, they would have if the show uh, or it closed at midnight, but uh, and there was a long line of cars out front, kids picking up, picked up at midnight. But if you could stay later, if you could stay a little while later in the lounge area as I was speaking, where they had the coffee and whatnot, was. Uh, they, they would order pizza, and they would order a ton of pizzas. They'd order like 24 pizzas, you know, enough to feed a small army. And they would ask the kids in if they wanted to, they'd come in, and the youth reverend of this club would come out. And if you stuck around for a prayer, 10, 15 minutes, reflection on the evening, any thoughts about God that needed to be thrown out, you got at the pizza. And it just didn't seem genuine to me because... At the end of the prayer, people were just waiting for that amen. They wanted to kind of launch it amen and get a whole pizza or two. And I remember feeling that way. I was like, this, is, this isn't a genuine prayer on anybody's account. You're bribing us with pizza. We're only here for the pizza. This is just such a, an unholy contract we have right now. religions off trying to find you with all his mind and everything it's always a mess you're the god that finds us Jesus. if you're there if you're real make yourself known hound us if there's really something out there if there's a pearl of great price it'd be worth everything we have to sacrifice it all to find it if there's any hope of meaning if there is any beyond the grave if there is any truth to evil and good being opposite and not just atoms colliding show us your ways Reveal your love to us. Hound every one of these people with your truth. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. And feed us. Amazing grace. Kids make fun of us or are mean to us or cuss at us or whatever like it really sort of encourages us in a way just because I mean Jesus told us you know if we're preaching the word he was persecuted and we're gonna be persecuted and it just kind of lets us know that you know we're doing something right. All the kids that were, you know, were the lonely outsider kids, more than the punk rockers, the real sensitive, like, face straight guys, and like, the ones that were at their most vulnerable. I, I think most of the emo kids were very vulnerable and lonely and had nobody to identify and were very strong, very meek people. And that's what they found so appealing about the style of music. When it started crossing over into Christian music, which, Praise on meek, lonely outsiders who need a sense of belonging. The Glee Club. Uh, what could be? What could be more perfect? I think the commercialization of the Christian music scene makes people suspicious about its motives. You know, if you're if you're really trying to save souls, that means you've got a great product to sell. You know, you're trying you're offering to save people from eternal torment. That sounds like a pretty good product. You know, why are you pimping all this other shit as well? <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a big uh, it's a it's a big industry now, and there's a lot of money into it. So whenever that comes in, whenever money comes into anything, it tends to uh, blow things out of the water and out of proportion. And you see a lot of you see a lot of the you see a lot of opportunist things that are the result of of the money and the and the business and the. You know the popularity and the fame and there's more magazines now and there's video programs and you know the, it gets bigger by the minute it's funny because your your um documentary has been covering in my mind probably the most interesting period of christian music that that there's been and it's actually it's actually gone from um a, a period where the camps were almost completely divided to where it's now so blurred that um record labels are now actively seeking out bands that have been on the sort of Christian rock and club circuit to sign them up. I have seen MTV specials about like the huge, 
you know, thousands and thousands of people going and seeing these shows and their albums are selling platinum and stuff and you're just like, <laughs> how is this happening? You know? It's happening because it's a very well-organized subculture. It's one of the few well-organized subcultures. Christians are well-organized. They're very well-organized. They're like the Germans. process of getting some general market critical acclaim with It's Hard to Find a Friend, I thought that we had sort of left all of that behind, all of that being Christian culture. And then a couple of years into it, um, to my um, sort of chagrin, I realized that, you know, we're playing all these bars on all these tours and we're playing to, you know, mostly or at least a pretty high percentage of Christian kids at these bars that are coming to see us play. And it really bummed me out because I wanted to think, you know, like I respected the record collections of the people that were at our shows. And I, you know, but come to find out it's a bunch of kids who listen to, you know, Christian rock. And and if I was, I mean, I, that's, who, that's who I was when I was, you know, 17 or whatever. And so, and I wouldn't want some dickhead to be like putting me down because I grew up in a certain house or didn't have an opportunity until now to make decisions about things that, you know, weren't influenced by like really direct propaganda from my church or whatever. creativity um, being equal if not greater than the power of words you know side by side you know it's always words and then you put some you know some kind of trendy music under that to get the message across well I think the music needs to prove it mm -hmm. you're saying one thing well prove it and, and hopefully the music will stimulate other things and you know basically carry it mm -hmm. carry it to its to its end a lot of people will argue that you know it's it's not true worship or, or whatever. But you know I think that a lot of times in in other circumstances people are dragged into feeling emotional and then they think that's worship instead of knowing the lyrics of the song and screaming them because you, you mean them because you've thought about them so many times because it's your favorite band. It's my I think that they are actually moving worship forward, and it, and it seems to me that 
people can't go to church anymore and feel like satisfied with the worship because it's just not at the level that a lot of Christian bands are, are getting to. The song is almost sacred to us. Um, I, I really feel like, like a lot of bands are always like, yeah, the Lord gave me this song and then it's a horrible song. But, um, <laughs> Like, even if this is a horrible song, like, I, I love what God has done with it. And, uh... When, when, when we wrote it, I just prayed that God would, would, would give me a song that every, every time I sang it, the words would be new. And I would never get tired of worshiping Him to that song. And, uh... And it came through. Because I've never gotten tired of worshiping when we sing this song. The song is about the resilience of Jesus Christ.
use the talent that God has given you, what you write from that is just an embellishment of your Christianity and it's just, you know, the, the product of Christ living inside of you. I, I remember specifically the OC Super Tones. They uh, they they stopped the set, and I liked it. I was really into ska and Miami Boston's at the time, and so they stopped the set. And I was thinking this is weird, and you know, I got quiet, and they just put a hand up and asked everyone to join in prayer. And again, I was kind of a little bit weirded out by this, and they wanted to thank God about everything and. You feel weird backing out of a prayer because it's not that you disagree with what's going on. It's just you don't want to be there right at that moment. And there's this feeling that someone, some higher power is watching you and you're kind of slurking away. But it was the strange thing, like, I felt like I had to make a split decision. Like, are you going with God? Because if, if you pray and you don't really believe in God, that seemed kind of weird too. So I, was, I didn't really know and I didn't want to have to make up my mind at a rock show. It's a weird place to want to make your mind about God, so I, I decided to plead the fifth and went outside smoke a cigarette. I don't feel like I have a message to get out there um, by doing this project. I'm a lot more interested in if I'm going to have an effect on people having it in my, my everyday life. This I is love just music. It's entertainment. It's a beautiful evening. It's a beautiful night. It's a beautiful feeling, young people, when you're feeling all right. When your mind starts to sweat, and your brain is stewing. And that was a weird one because have two of the guys were avid, open Christians. I don't say avid, foaming at the mouth. In fact, I sat down with with the singer one night and had a long talk with him. I was like, oh, I just you know, I just want to talk to you about because no, every all the other other bands would talk around it and not directly. And I, I think sat down one night. Members of their band were the same way. Like, yeah, talk around. It. <laughs> like, I know his band. Member, and I sat down with him one night. I was like, this is nonsense. I want to have this discussion. So we talked for a while. And he was really. Great. He was, I really liked where he was coming from. He had his things to say, which I didn't agree with, but he was cool about the way he communicated with other people. He didn't share his opinions. But it just seemed like half the band was like, you know, really resentful of it. And there was like, it was kind of like this fine line that you couldn't cross where he would sing these songs that were obviously songs to Jesus and songs to God. But as long as it wasn't completely obvious, nobody minded. But when he'd get like really into it and like slip and say, yes, my Lord, everybody on the stage would look at him, you know, because he accidentally went that extra centimeter. And I'd be really pissed if I was him, you know? There's, I mean, there's bands that have, you know, that, that just, try to break away from this industry but they they can't because once they're once they've been thrown in this you know word goes around fast and you know uh and, and you know there's a large group of fans that like you said automatically will just discount you automatically because they know you're a christian and um so yeah people try to skirt around the word they try to say oh yeah we're positive or whatever i really don't know why someone would get i have no idea why somebody wouldn't wouldn't like something because somebody claimed they were a Christian. I think it's a cop out, really. But I think it's even a bigger cop out when bands try to avoid it and sort of chicken out on the whole thing. 
I mean, our whole thing from the get-go was like, yeah, we're Christians, we're a Christian band, we don't care, I mean, whatever, you know. And um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have to go before the Lord later on and go, well, we were a little chicken to represent you down there, you know, I and mean, that's, that's weird. But I understand why bands do it, but then I think they're, they're just, I think their head might be in the wrong place. Back in the Striper days, you know, uh, we were really looking to cross over into the uh, secular, uh, you know, market. You know, we were trying not to blend in too much with the Christian uh, market, only because, not that we didn't want to be there or not blend in, but I think there was a plan for us to try to reach out to another audience. And, and, and I thought that was, you know, that's why we played in nightclubs and, and uh, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff went on in the early days. We were trying to do something at that time we felt was the right thing to do. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think, you know, we're, we, we learn as we grow in, 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 our, in our faith, you know, you come to realize how, you know, really things like that don't, don't really matter. How many of you guys caught the POD set last night? Happening, huh? Well, I tell you, man, they're, they're tough footsteps to follow in, but I tell you, we're all here for the same cause. We're all here to make a stand and make a bold stand for Jesus Christ. So Stripe has always been about, we've never been about ourselves or about our musicianship or our songs, we've always wanted to go out there and tell the world about Christ and Christ only. Because that's really, in the end, that's all that matters. Nothing else matters at all, period. So, if you leave here and you take only one thing with you, please take that, take those words, that Jesus Christ is all that matters. Okay? A lot of people seem to tell us, well, we're positive rock, right. which it's confusing to me because I don't understand what... Right, well, plenty of bands are positive. There's, there's right. and for instance, like the band Hatebreed, is like, their lyrics are super positive, but they're like, you know, they're one of the most, uh, the biggest, like, skinhead drawing bands, like, in, you know, the United States, and like, super violent shows, and like, you know... But then if you listen to their lyrics, surprisingly enough, it's like, you know, super go get them positive. But I mean, yeah, positive doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> death metal response is burn Christians, kill them all, and so if you even say Christ in a non-derogatory manner, they shut you off and don't give you a chance. And so sometimes we get flack that, well, you're just watering down the message, and we're like, well, you could look at it that way, but at the same time, we want to have a chance, too, and whereas the power of Christ stands in Christ alone, if, if you're going to shut it out, be just because of preconceived ideas and hate us because of, of the message we bear. I wouldn't call it watering it down, but rather trying to have a chance. A lot of times when Christian bands play with secular bands, they get, they get ridiculed because uh, they're talking about uh, nothing about Jesus in some of their songs and they're not really plugging Jesus out there. But I guess how I feel about it is that 
you shouldn't have to like they they these people that that uh, ridicule bands for not talking about Jesus to everyone they they uh, get to talk to on the stage they have jobs they go to work and they they don't necessarily put wear the I'm I'm a Jesus freak shirt on they wear a tie to work we don't come to there and say wow you really need to represent Jesus in the way you dress and or you need to represent Jesus in at your business meetings by bringing him up. Can you imagine that, a CEO of a company standing up and saying, well, I don't think Jesus would do it this way to all these secular people in his room? Well, suddenly now, since rock band's job is to play rock and roll, I mean, that's their job. Duvall plays rock and roll, gets money for it, and that's how they support themselves. Well, these bands that are supporting themselves, suddenly it's not become a job anymore. They're supposed to... Uh, sing Jesus in every song and they're supposed to make it really direct so that people can clearly understand they're talking about Jesus when they're making a bigger impact we're talking to other bands that they're playing with backstage they're making a bigger impact by not saying anything because the truth is that people can be offended by people talking to them about Jesus it's just how we live talk though that will say we're Christians in a band and we don't want the label but they're still as for God as anything we're POD but, but but they're like out there like still they're still spreading the gospel right. and, and still being good examples so you don't have to be called a Christian man to be doing good stuff right. I think it has to do with the way that they're, they continue to live their lives like yeah. if they start backsliding and stuff when they go over but if but when they do go over that's a great opportunity to be able to minister to like a, a larger audience There's so much about this festival and this life and this music scene um, that isn't about Jesus. And I really believe it's breaking his heart. And God has shown me how selfish I am over the past few months and uh, how this scene and this festival started for the glory of God, and we came together because we are all Christians. And most of us walk around all day, maybe with our best friend, maybe with a girlfriend or the guys in your band or whoever it is, and Jesus' name isn't even mentioned. And if it is, it's it awkward, and it's almost like you're not cool, and it's like you're a dork if you bring up Jesus and... Uh, that hurts my heart. And uh, I've just made a commitment. I'm sorry, this is real hard. I've just made a commitment that I want to be a man of truth. And I want to stand for the name of Jesus Christ and not be ashamed of it and not substitute he's and him's in, but stand on the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight I'm encouraging you guys because I feel like God has told me to call you guys to be people of truth because Luke 10 16 says if we reject Jesus we reject God and there's power in that name and he's the reason that we're here and everything exists for the glory of God and 
I'm tired of trying to sell Jesus and make him seem like he's like the world. And I'm tired of trying to give a message of the gospel that's only half of the truth and telling people that they don't have to change and that they can just keep living like they are and selling this idea of cheap grace because I'm coming to a realization that my words, no matter how adequately I put them, no matter how good my argument is, my words are not going to convict anyone. Only the Holy Spirit is going to convict people and the Holy Spirit is only going to travel through truth. I think one of the things that some people find troubling about evangelicals is that, uh, I've got to be careful what I say here, they, they, they're evangelists in many ways. They want other people to find the same truth that, that they've found. And that's a, that's a tricky area because um, a lot of people would rather not hear, hear about it, right? But if you believe that you have a truth, you want to tell people about it, you know? If you're, if you're motivated by a political cause, but the idea of an activist I actually find very appealing, you know, and, and people that believe in something so much that they're willing to go out on a limb and tell other people about it and get and activate about it, I find very appealing. So um, I actually think some people have a problem with evangelicals just because they're evangelistic about it. They want other people to know about it. And I don't think it's necessarily motivated out of Sometimes it can be motivated about wrong reasons, but I think at, at the base of it, it's motivated because they want people to find the same truth that they fervently believe. And of course, we live in a culture where sort of postmodern thought is that there are many truths, and but not everybody believes that. A lot of us believe that there actually is one truth, and um, and yet that's a very offensive idea. And you know, I understand that. Christianity is, is, is about Jesus Christ. It's about the fact that he died on the cross 2,000 years ago and, and the fact that we believe he rose again and, you know, he's, he's, you know that we're saved by grace, you know, uh, from our sins. And, and um, you know, when the Bible says, when the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, I mean, he didn't say, I'm the way, but there's these three other ways and there's five other ways. All the other religions, they, um, they, they take other religions into consideration for the most part and Christianity doesn't do that Christianity says look we're not we're not talking about religion or taking you know um, a, like a necessary like a construct and in taking that and splitting it apart and throwing it over here so you can all have your little piece of the pie it's just saying no it's about a relationship with Christ and just taking his at him at his word and either you believe in what he says or you don't and there's just kind of not a little not a lot of middle ground so I, I, it's an offense to people because it's like, well, how can you, how can you say that about me? How can you, uh, how can you, th how can you, how can you judge me? If I really believe that God is true, then I don't have to worry about it because it, it, then He's gonna, it's then it, it is, you know, it's, it, it's gonna be made known to everybody or whatever, and it's it's not gonna be by, by me trying to persuade anybody. So then, so fuck all that. But let's just like get together on what we love and what we have in common or whatever. And so that's what like there's. We play at Shubas tomorrow night, and there's going to be Christian kids, and there's going to be people that think that Christianity is the most ignorant thing that they've ever come across in their lives. But the thing that hopefully they have in common is that they like Damien songwriting, and that they like Pedro the Lion, and that's awesome. I mean, that's that's what the whole thing is about. And so, and if anything else happens from there that is true, then it does. But if it doesn't, then that's the reconciliation is the point. My interest is in uh, connecting different underground music communities because they're very segregated, and they feel you know the secular world and the Christian world are you know, oh, yeah. there's a giant there's road no, between the two. There's no, there's no putting it together. We right. can't. We are never going to agree because of the, the situation that there, we believe that there's only one God, one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. And there's, no, there's nothing can convince us otherwise, and we know. Because if you have that experience like I've gone through and so many thousands here have, you know, we know the truth. And that, that's the whole thing about the peace.
I want the people to know that he saved my soul But I still like to listen to the radio They say rock and roll is wrong, we'll give you one more chance I say I feel so good, I gotta get up and dance I know what's right, I know what's wrong I don't confuse it All I'm really trying to say Is why should the devil have all the good music And I feel good every day Cut my hair, they're driving me insane I threw it out long to make room for my brain But sometimes people don't understand What's a good boy doing in a rock and roll band There's nothing wrong with playing blues lips But if you got a reason, tell me to my face Why should the devil have all the good music? There's nothing Just say 